In this video, we are going to talk about the Vim text editor. We are going to show practical examples hands-on and we will also see the most important shortcuts to apply when we work with the Vim text editor. So after this one, you will feel pretty comfortable editing any Linux file with the Vim editor. Let's get started. So we might need to install the Vim text editor first, we cannot take for granted that it is installed by default, so I'm going to use my package manager which is dnf, and I'm going to say sudo dnf install vim like that. And that might be a different package manager if you use Ubuntu for example, it will be apt, for myself it is a Fedora. And now I can say vim and then specify a new text file like new file. And then here we go, we can start edit a new file with Vim. So you can see that I have valuable information in the bottom line, like the name of the file, the fact that is new, and also the number of line and the number of character position right here. Okay, so currently we need to understand that in Vim we could be in different modes. By default, we open the text editor in a normal mode, basically a mode that just displays you the information of the file and allows you to change between different modes. Now, if I will go with I, then you can see that we see some different information underneath. It shows me that I'm inside insert mode and that is a go sign for me that I can edit this file now I can say this is a new file that I am editing right now if we leave the insert mode by pressing escape then I cannot insert characters to this file now I can try to press on something like I don't know 9 8 7 and you can see that it really does not edit the file now those characters are displayed underneath because Vim thinks that we try to do some special action but if we wrote something that we did not mean it in normal mode we can just press on escape and continue to our next action. Okay so we will press on escape one more time and now let's go with the basics let's try to save this file now. So we can press on escape and by pressing the colon then we are now in a command mode. We can give specific commands like saving the file, quitting or aborting all the changes and do some more stuff that will be helpful. So if we press W for writing to this file and the Q for quitting the file after writing and press on enter, then you can see that I get my terminal back because I quit from the Vim text editor. If I say now cat, new file then you can see that I really added this content to that file. Now the opposite action meaning that writing to a file but not saving the changes will be something like the following. So in order to go to a new line when I'm in normal mode I can press on O and that will be both starting a new line and also going into insert mode. So I will write now this is a line and I will just leave it as it is and if I press on escape right now let's say that I don't want to change anything and I press on colon Q you can see that it is going to complain me about how I try to quit a file without saving anything and to overcome that I can again press on escape go back to normal mode and then I will say colon Q with an explanation mark and then basically I don't save anything new to that file. So after catching up with the basics, let's see some more great reasons why Vim could be amazing. So I'm going to start a new Python file by using .py extension. And don't worry if you don't have any experience with Python, that's totally fine. We are going to write very basic code and I'm just going to go ahead and insert a print function. And inside the parentheses, I'm just going to type in, this is highlighted inside double quotes. And then I'm going to go to a new line. Now we can really see that this is highlighted and that's because Vim knows to prepare you the perfect environment before the text editor gets executed. Well, you can go back to normal mode and you can use a command like syntax off followed of course with a colon in the beginning and if you press on enter then you can see that the syntax is really disappeared. Doing the opposite action, go back to normal mode and then use colon syntax on like the following. So that really means that Vim does something for you before it gives you this nice environment and it executes a list of commands so that it will really be nice to work with. 
Now you can go ahead and run your own commands in each file that you work against. So you can go ahead and go back to normal mode. Let's say column and then I'm going to use set number like that. And if I do that, then it's going to highlight for us the number of lines in our file, which is quite nice. Now, if we want to go back pressing on escape, colon WQ, then this will basically save and quit the file. But the next time that I'm going to go inside this file, you can see something weird. The syntax highlighting is there, but the number lines, which we saw before, disappeared. So that really means that the configurations that you apply in the Vim text editor are not persistent unless you start to do things a little bit different. Now, there is the option to persistently configure your Vim every time that you work with the Vim text editor. And that will be by writing the commands exactly like it is in a specific file. So let's go ahead and see that. And that's going to be very cool, right? So we are going to go ahead and we will start a new file, which you have to name intentionally the way that I do. So you are going to go to your home and then by using tilde, of course, and then forward slash dot vimrc. Vimrc is a unique file which is just a list of commands that will execute every time you work with the Vim text editor. Now, if I press on enter, then this is going to be a new file. Now, I'm just going to say insert, and then I'm going to write in directly set number, like that. And I'm not doing this this time with the colon, pay attention to that. And now we already know how to save a file, right? Escape, colon, WQ, and then we just get out. Okay, so in order to activate the changes, then we're gonna need to execute the following command. So source, and then the path to the new file that we created. So tilde, forward slash, dot vim rc. And now that we have done this, we can really go back to editing the Python file and the number lines will always be there. So I'm going to go ahead and use vim run.py and you can see that we see the numbers which is quite useful to always have especially when we work on code that we want to edit. Alright, so after we've done this, then let's see how we can improve our navigation skills when we work with the Vim text editor. Now I'm going to edit a file that already exists in each Linux system which is inside your home directory, so tilde forward slash dot bash rc. Now the rc in the end might look familiar in this file because we saw a similar file before. I will explain in a bit what it does, but let's first see how we can navigate through the characters and words in this file. So you can see that right now I am in the first line. And of course, if you're in normal mode, then navigating through arrow signs is something that is possible, which might be helpful in some cases, but you can be faster than that. If you want to jump by words, then you can use W, as you can see, now I'm jumping across words. And if you want to do this in reverse, then you can use B. So now you can see that I'm going the opposite way. Okay, so that is how we can jump across words. Now you can go to a end of a line by using Shift 4, which is basically the dollar sign. And you can press 0 to go back to the first character in each line. Now, if you want to go to the very top of your file, then you can press G twice fast. So now you can see that I'm in the first line and the exact opposite action will be shift G, which will take you to the last line in each file. Now, if you know the number line that you want to edit now, let's say line number nine, then you can go ahead and use colon nine and press enter. You can see how right now I am in line number nine and I can start working on that line. Okay, so those are some popular shortcuts that were to memorize. Of course, there are tons of more shortcuts that will help you to improve your life with Wim, but memorizing all of them could be hard in the first look. So I will attach a cheat sheet in my description so you can take a look in the list of things that you can do with Wim on your own time. Okay, so we are going to apply a change in our Linux system that will use Vim as our default text editor. Now, we cannot take for granted that every time that we need to edit a file for some reason, then the Linux system will use the Vim text editor. 
For example, if you want to execute a command that will run cron jobs, or you will execute some commands that will require file editing like the different git commands that exist, then Linux will use the default text editor that is configured in the system. Now in order to see the default text editor, then we can actually print the following environment variable. So I can go ahead and use echo, and if I was to print the value of $editor, then you can see that I receive a nano, and that means that Linux uses nano as the default text editor. Now, since we learned about Vim and how powerful it could be, then you might want to change the default text editor to Vim. Now, in order to know where the Vim file is on your system, then you can use a command like which, and then it should be followed with the command that you want to see where the file is actually in the system, and this will just give you the exact path where the Vim binary file is, and you can see the result here. Now, we can actually take this and override the environment variable persistently. Now, if you remember, I said that this bash rc file is a special file that I'm going to explain its behavior in just a bit. Well, right now, it is about to understand it. Well, we know that vimrc is a file that executes before the vim text editor gets executed. Well, the .bashrc file is a list of commands that are executed before the bash shell gets executed. So this is a very low level file because imagine a file that always gets executed every time you SSH to a machine because we use bash in order to work with different commands, right? So this is a critical file and I can actually edit this file to inject a persistent environment variable. Now, if you never heard about environment variables, then I have a tutorial that explains deeply what environment variables are. So be sure to check my channel out if you want to understand deeply how environment variables work. Okay, so if we edit this file, then I can actually go to line number 14 because I see that it is empty, right? And we know how to do that. So escape colon line number 14, right? And I can start editing this line and I can say export. Export is the command to create an environment variable. And I can just override my editor. And the editor is going to be equal to a single code string and I will use the path of vim. So forward slash usr, forward slash bin, forward slash vim like that. Okay, so now I can use escape and I can save those changes. And in order to activate those changes, then I'm just going to execute source tilde forward slash dot bash rc like that. Okay, and if I do that, then it will apply my changes to the current shell. So this means that the next time I try to access the editor environment variable, then it should be different. Now, if I try to really print its value, then you can see that the value has been changed. And that is a valuable change that you will see its benefits when you use commands that will require file editing. So that's the reason I wanted to explain this action because it will just always make sure that the default text editor in this user, in this Linux system, will be Vim. Okay, so that will be about Vim. Believe me, I did not cover everything that I wanted to cover in this tutorial because there is much more. Be sure to check out the cheat sheet that I will provide in the description. And if you're already a user that started to work with Vim, let me know in the comment section what I should have included in this tutorial and also share the knowledge what Vim is capable of. Alright, so if you enjoyed in here, be sure to hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next tutorial.